and social issues. My name is Kimberly Tate Malone, and I'm one of the reference and instruction librarians here. Show of hands, how many folks have been to COSI before? Right, a decent number. So for those who have not heard my spiel, we hold this series in the library every Thursday because we see it as an extension of our charge, we build the freedom of information, open exchange of ideas. We want a space where we're all able to learn and grow from each other, expand our understanding of the world and our and ourselves. So we have the series, we have this session every week. We won't be having it next week due to the break, but the following week we'll be having a session on prison labor and prison abolition from 12 to 1250 in this room, led by some of our reentry students and our reentry program navigator. We also have some resources up here if you'd like to learn more about this topic and you like to read books and things like that. And if you're interested in other resources like online, print, etc. Feel free to go to the reference desk, and whoever is there will be happy to help you find additional resources. At the end of this, I'll pass out a very brief survey asking what you liked, how we can improve, and what you'd like to see in future quarters so we can keep this series relevant to you all. But without further ado, I want you to join me in welcoming our five panelists today from our Humanities Films classes, right, who will be talking about Seattle's student created films at Seattle Central College. So please join me in welcoming them. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bryant. Uh, you can call me B. Um, so I did not know I'd be taking the lead on this. Uh, thanks, Vero. Uh, I am the uh, co-president of the student cinematic create the student creative cinematic arts. Sorry, I'm still getting used to the new name. Basically, with film club, and this is my co-president, Michael. And here we have. If you guys want to introduce yourself, one by one. And we're all student filmmakers. We all have made films here um, for uh, a class or just making films. So what we kind of do is kind of like help aspiring filmmakers. Also, I, I wrote some of the stuff in my card to prevent myself from saying the F word a lot because I tend to do that when I wing it. So if I drop an F bomb, just like, you know, do like a little slash counter. It's like, okay, you said 50 times during this. So, um, yeah. <laughs> People who, and, uh, people who view films as art, and that's one thing that we kind of want to do is, film is not just you know what, how much money we can make at the box office, it's, it's art, just like painting, just like photography, just like music, just like writing. Film is art, and that's what we should kind of look at, especially our film as, um, you know, kind of take off your Hollywood lens and your, uh, you know, discourses. I know like whenever you hear student film, you're like, oh, it's probably going to be something generic. It's like, listen, it's it's the same thing as someone coming up to your like, piece of paper you're doodling when you're like drawing. It's like, that's not art. It's like, it, if you're drawing, it's art. Everything is art. So I want to make that clear. That way you guys will get on my bad side. Um, so <laughs> uh, another thing, these films, they do come from, I would say, like our vulnerability. It's kind of stuff that we want to talk about that we need to bring up. Um, Usually that's what art is. It comes from your vulnerability. It comes from your either your your happiness that you want to share, your pain you want to share, your sadness, whatever. It comes from our vulnerability. So keep that in mind uh, when we do you know ask for questions and whatnot. Um, and also, I should be clear, this is not a critique. It's an open discussion. Uh, I don't care if you like my film. I don't care if it doesn't have the celebrated forms of Hollywood. I don't care. Because that's not how I made my film. That's not how we made our film. So, and we do have a limited time, and we have hopefully, hopefully four to, four films to show. Uh, so I'm gonna have some you know time management like restrictors. Um, so try to keep your questions short, direct, and respectful. Um, and then I'll, after we show each film, we're gonna have the director kind of like talk about uh, like the creative process, the production, the collab with peers. And you know why, or how we can make it our life work, or why we make it our life work. So, without further ado, the first film is. Tigers. This. Going through the dockets. Do you want to do spank first? I think we're doing spank first, right? Oh, Jesus. Okay. So you want to give like a brief history, or like? Ah. Uh, really quick, or? Yeah. Um. I guess so. I made this film. Uh, in uh, career cinema class, uh, I wanted to create it with the intent of um, seeing something through uh, the lens of like the 
female gaze, I pretty quickly realized that was not a thing. Uh, I, so, um, I was looking at the idea of uh, kind of like sexualizing the male body, what makes, uh, what makes a male body sexy or uh, what, because my understanding of that was more like uh, the idea of sexy was purely uh, female bodies, uh, purely the idea of like um, soft, smooth, like butts, boobs, whatever. Um, so that is uh, kind of what I was going for was the idea of uh, sexualizing a male body and um, I went around and asked people uh, what makes uh, a person sexy and they gave me a lot of different responses uh, which I show in the film and uh, that was used to show um, that our idea of sexy, what is created, is not really real. Um, people have all sorts of different <coughs> ideas. A lot of them have to do with eyes. Or, um, so not necessarily something that we uh, would say is, is like that created ideal of, of a sexy person. So, I think I might think of anything else this
of my creative process, uh, it changed as I was creating this. As I was asking people all these weird things, I wanted to like sort of have people embody what they were saying and I realized that a lot of that was difficult. Um, and it's also sort of not impossible for me to ask um, other people to uh, do certain things, but it was just easier for me to do it myself. Um, and it was super weird. Uh, <laughs> for production, uh, I use just my phone. Um, and I, part of that problem was that I, uh, because I was in it, I couldn't film all of it. Um, and that created a lot of issues within editing as uh, some of the people that I asked to film certain parts. I didn't give them enough direction on, um, on how to hold a camera and, uh, and what I wanted. Um, so that became a really big issue after the fact. Uh, so keep that in mind uh, if you're making a film. Uh, I collaborated with a lot of folks. I asked friends. Um, I asked uh, my classmates. Most of this, uh, most of the people were classmates. A lot of my friends were interested, but not really willing to say anything on camera. They yelled a lot of things while I was filming other people off camera. And the things that they said were a lot more fun than what I filmed. Uh, but um, they didn't want to say. Um, and as far as making my life work. Uh, I really genuinely enjoy making uh, or pursuing uh, questions that I have in my personal life uh, in an artistic way. Um, sharing it is a lot harder, but, uh, but I really enjoy the act of doing it. There will be an accident which will injure three children. And what decisions does management require from this department? Uh, management will require this department to say which one of the three potentials will not survive the accident. Does this department have any future variable decisions dealing with extraneous factors on this subject or their environment to contend with? Not at this time. Understood. Proceed. Uh, Potential number one will marry and have three offspring. Spouse and one offspring will outlive potential number one, but nothing else of note. Uh, another offspring will spend the majority of their adult life in and out of prison for various offenses. And the third offspring will create a new pastime for millions of others. Uh, potential number two will live an uneventful life. Uh, they have no progeny. Uh, nor will they have any impact of import on any others. And the last one? Uh, potential number three uh, will marry but have no progeny. Uh, their spouse will be the CEO of a medium sized textile company. Uh, potential number three's research into DNA coding will result in a breakthrough that will directly influence a cure for Shemp's disease in about three generations.
eliminate potential number three. Thank you. Next. Go. Uh, there will be uh, an accident. just hugs and kisses and families when nine times out of ten that's the stuff that just yeah anyways let's just watch it and um, hopefully I'll try not to cry <laughs>
actually happen? No, um, not in this way. Have they happened with other people? Yes. Um, how I interpret it and what I experienced, it's kind of hard to shoot uh, a war scene in Washington, so I opted out and did another alternative. Um, with the creative process, it was, I'm going to combine like most of these all in one. Um, it was just myself and my sister. My sister being the one that knows the most about me, I trusted her with the camera work and the guidance of um, the direction of where the film was going. Um, of course, we had several actors. I had, um, I was able to get two of the students from the uh, intro to film class to uh, be the uh, main, the, the white sergeant and the um, person on the ground. And then, uh, pretty much all the camera work was just between my sister and I. Um, making it my life work. Uh, so, long story short, I'm going to make this one quick. Um, tally that one up. Uh, I wanted to uh, make films just because after I got out of the army, I worked at Bonnie Watson Funeral Home right over there for about a couple months. Got shot in the face and realized that, hey, maybe I should uh, do something that I want to do. And so I wanted to make films. And then when I took Beryl's class, she saw that, uh, at least I saw that, there was more of the films than just you know, what you see on the big screen. It was, there was art, there was you know, meaning behind it, there was a way to express yourself. And uh, I didn't know what to do because you know, all this stuff. Uh, and out came Vile. Um, I would say it's my bank mobus. I've made many films since then, but I always come back to this one. Uh, I feel like it's the one that's the most revealing of me, I guess. So. Other than that, yeah. and one of my favorite films that I'm gonna work on, um, with Marisha, if you want to position something on your phone. Imagine being a woman. Imagine being black. Imagine being disabled. Imagine being queer. Imagine being depressed and oppressed. Now imagine being all of those at once. I don't have to because I live that. My strength is not synonymous with the ways in which I move through this world. My true strength is nothing surface level. It's something you can see if only you're willing to use your love language that lies within you. My strength is in my ability to do all things through love and compassion. My strength is telling depression and anxiety to quiet down as I challenge myself to do my daily routine whatever that means, because no day goes as planned. My strength is in knowing that my hurt will never outlast my heart. My strength is not to be confused with my fight. My fight and love both fearless, but my fight is bold. My fight is fiery passion. 
no weapons, no fists, just words that have been simmering and waiting to be served scolding hot. I will fight for those who can't defend themselves, those who can't lift their voices as high as mine. I will not tolerate any injustice. People may not always speak up for me, but my do the right thing attitude has always been strong. to scriptures, to Sundays, to Sundays, and sunny days. I lift my head as Mother Nature adds love and warmth to my face. Let me be a beacon of light and love. Do you see yourself in my reflection? If you look close enough, you can see God herself. She lives within everyone and every natural peace upon this earth. She's kissed my skin with melanin, cocoa, and honey, an organic mixture of raw love and ability to flourish through what may be seen as adversity. She's breathed life into me every morning and heard my heart when no one else could. She's never abandoned me, only strengthened me and myself, only showed me that her love is never too far away, only a reflection away. Do you see her in your reflection?
been on this for a long time. We've been on another elevator. humbly and highly about yourself like you do the ones closest to your heart. Don't let your self-love go undernourished. Let go of what was because you never were of who they once thought of you to be. You keep going. Smile through a new day as bright as the sun on a day when the air seemed crisper and the sky seemed bluer and closer to the truer version of you. See the beauty and the growth and the new beginning. Trust in you. Stay true and never bold because you're brand new. You are stronger and wiser as the days roll. You deserve some credit too. You deserve the love and warmth you spread. The kind they said you could never have. You're going to be okay as long as you keep going. It's okay to just be okay. It's okay to heal. Um, oh, yeah, so what have you experienced? So, I went into the ADA accessible stall, which uh, the doors were shortened by facilities here on campus um, for that very reason of not knowing who was in the stalls or if there were, was a person in the stalls. And when they did that, they didn't even it out with the lock, so it does not lock. So people will just, you know, walk on in instead of looking underneath see if they see a mobility device or whatnot. Yeah. I mean, it's meant for people with mobility devices. There's another stall that's, you know, just around the corner with uh, bars just, you know, the same size as the other stalls. Yeah. There's the family restroom. But the one that is the slimmest is specifically for people who don't have mobility. Yeah. My name is Larisha and I have cerebral palsy. When I was a young child, my mom explained to me that I was born premature and I didn't start officially walking until I was about five, but up until then I would combat crawl everywhere I went. So I basically made ripped jeans a thing before they were actually a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it.
my life's work. Um, I really enjoy art and um, I really enjoy writing, but I also really love activism and uh, holding uh, a really, really big piece of my heart is the disabled, the sick and disabled community. And I want to leave my mark here. Um, I want to be able to uplift a minority group that is not very often spoken about, always kind of the last to be spoken about, which, you know, we as people, we are all temporarily able. And I would like for everybody to take a moment to just process that and think about that. Uh, next time you decide which stall you're going to use when you go to the restroom, please do not use the Indian stall. <laughs>
because uh, yeah. Um, I was just curious, uh, especially for your film, I noticed that certain frames were very um, like you overlap the hallways and things. Did you already have a lot of that planned out mentally, or did it kind of come to you as you were developing it? Uh, it kind of came to, there are some scenes, like very few, that I, I had that came to mind, but a lot of it is, and this is a tip that I take from Vero to the grave, just record every damn second, and record for a long ass time, and then, I, I, all those extra footage I got, it's like, oh, this will work well with this, uh, like the hallway scene, uh, that one was planned out, uh, for like, going up the stairs and whatnot, but like, most of the other ones, I just kind of, it's like, oh, it works. It works with this. It works with this. You know, it's same with like, you know, painting. It's like, oh, I was going to do blue, but actually, lavender looks good. You know? I'm going to stick in here for just a second. Um, so, uh, I, I just want to say that I, it's just so, like, these folks teach me so much. Um, they teach me how to teach film uh, by making them. I'm so, at, like, so impressed with what they've accomplished. And many of them have made many more films. and. We'll have a film festival at the end of the year. We highly encourage you to come. It's really fun. And, um, and you know, we get to talk to the filmmakers and talk about the creative process. Also, I would encourage you to make films yourself. Um, we have a bunch of film classes, uh, intro to film, world cinema, uh, film genre. We're going to do zombies this, this spring, so that'll be fun. Um, and we'll make zombie movies. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, and we also have a film uh, a program want to say something about the film program upstairs? Um, sure, I can speak really quickly. I'm uh, Bliss Holloway. I'm uh, the coordinator for the visual media program up on the fifth floor. We're part of the Creative Academy. There's a design school up there as well, and the visual media program is a program that started just two years ago. So we're graduating our first students this spring with an AA degree. It's a two-year lockstep program where you take all the same classes. It's super intensive. It's five hours a day, five classes a week. Uh, so you take one class per day, and it's just that class all day long from 9 to 2, as well as work outside. So it really is like a full-time job, and you have to take the entire program. But it's a two-year study with um, emphasis on photography and technical aspects of filmmaking. So you take a photography class uh, one day a week for two years. You take a filmmaking class or a video class one day a week for two years. And in addition to that, the other three days a week, you're doing history of film, you're doing professional practices to teach you how to start up your own business in the film industry or to work as a freelancer. You're taking individual classes where you're, it's all about doing various, you know, specific production aspects. Um, but it's for, yeah, people that are really looking to make this a career and make this their life. So any uh, congratulations to all the filmmakers who saw today. That was awesome. You're right. Thank you. I encourage all the four of you, especially, to come up and visit me on the fifth floor. We can talk a little bit more about the program, but anybody who's interested, come up and see me. My face is on my office door. I'm often there. I'm there for a a week, so come up and find me. Um, and yeah. Yeah, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we're going to, because our, our program is much more clear, some folks are going to go on to a bachelor's degree in so on it, and, and his is an a, a, AA, so we're hoping to collaborate. If you are in one of my classes, make sure that you sign in somewhere. Somebody's part of the right here. Yeah, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask him to me or